Um, I'll be fighting Chisora, and that's it. Look forward to it. And if you don't want to watch it, then please don't. And if you do, <laughs> tune in. And if you don't want to buy a ticket, don't buy a ticket. And if you do, we let the rest of the 50 or 60 or 1,000 that's already bought tickets. So uh, I one would last say, question about you, sir. I beg to differ with you because there's already been over 60,000 tickets sold. So somebody's obviously interested in the fight. Well, I think people are interested in you because you, you are great. And I don't dispute that for one second, Tyson. But what people really I, want you is... You can the, see where I'm coming from. I can't let you, probably never had a fight in your life, run Chisora down. He's fought everybody. I'm not doing I that. I not let that happen. I'm just saying the fact are he's lost 50% of his last 50 in fights and isn't at the level matter. that he's fought you're at world on. level. World level. And he fought, he fought the, well, what is now the unified heavyweight champion of the world in Usyk, yeah. pushed him all the way. So somebody who can't fight doesn't do that. I never said he can't fight, though. What, I, what I'm saying is, is he, with his record right now, I don't think he should be getting a world title fight. And I think there's a potential in boxing for people to get badly hurt when they're mismatched. And I think that this is a mismatch. I don't. I think the heavyweight fights and anything can happen. Don't uh-huh. write Derek Chikora off because you're only one punch away from victory hey, order. In that sense. And I wish you the best of luck, mate. See you the next time. Cheers, mate. I think you're a tosser, you little tosser. (laughs) Thanks. And I won't be doing any more interviews with you, little toss pot bearded. No worries, mate. Thanks very much. Kiss my balls, (laughs) you little (laughs) You little shit out. Have you worked out how to close this phone? Are you all right? Hit the button at the bottom. Yeah, 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 it's your boy, Cold Blue Opinions, coming back at you with another one of his opinions coming from his motherfucking bunker. Now, we got Tyson Fury, we got True Jordy. Um, in this whole interaction, I was not going to talk about this. And the reason being was that it was just that drama, drama, drama. And I could have talked about this the day that it came out, but I'm trying to be more professional. I'm trying to have videos come out every day and schedule them ahead of time, so that's what I'm doing. But... I also didn't just want to talk about it because there was nothing I could really get from it. It was like, I've just been talking shit about True Jordy. Like, if there was a, anything to talk about, like, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. That's just kind of pointless. There's nothing to really get out of it too much. But now that I've read this article and I, I, I want to go over this, it gives me a different perspective on things, right? So we're going to talk about what Tyson Fury said, how he, he said what happened to him after the Deontay Wilder fight, and then why True Jordy was wrong for that. And there's gonna be a little bit of a little bit of a interval in between where I, I go off on a tangent. So he says, well, the article says, on the way to victory, however, we we're talking about the victory over Dante Wilder, Fury was knocked down twice in the fourth, in the fourth round. And while he got up both times, he has since revealed that it took more of a toll than might have been clear at first. So while getting my face punched in for a living has put millions of pounds in the bank, a fighter needs to know when their time is up and mine is near. Fury said in his autobiography, Gloves Off. Walking away from boxing may be the hardest thing I ever do. All I know is that I don't want to overlay my welcome, ruin my legacy, or die from a big right to the side of the head. And believe me, an ending like that has felt worrying, uh, worryingly real at times. I even experienced short-term memory loss following that bruising encounter with Wilder in 2021, when, in the hours after the win, my head covered in tennis ball-sized lumps, it was impossible to remember how many times I'd gone down. Now, that's crazy. Now, I know some people may say because in the interview, Tyson says he doesn't care about his legacy or how he's remembered at the end of the day. I knew that that was cap. I know that that was a lie. You know, he, he was he was trying to talk his way out of it. I mean, True Jordy was putting him in a tough situation, but he, he kept asking him that. But, you know, it, obviously, at the end of the day, he does care about his legacy. But still, there's a lot of factors that come into it. And I'll get into that in, in a second about the True Jordy and why True Jordy was wrong. And he really needs to apologize to Tyson Fury. Because what he did, it, it kind of pisses me off, right? But what he's saying here, I've actually kind of went through this in a weird sort of way. Not in a sense where I fought someone like Deontay Wilder and I fought... No, 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 no. But my freshman year of high school and maybe longtime viewers have seen this. Oh, I've heard this. I, I got jumped. And I got jumped by seniors. I was a freshman. I was like 14, 15 years old. And some niggas who were like 17, 18, damn near grown, they decided to come along and they decided they wanted to jump me. So when they hit me the initial time, because they came from behind, they snuck me, everything went blurred. Like it was, it was, it was, it was like I got dazed. You know how in GTA you get drunk and you're like falling over, and that's kind of how it was. And I didn't know what the fuck was even happening. I could like my adrenaline went off, I was dazed, so I could barely feel them. 
and my Alexa is about to go off in a second, so prepare for that. But I could barely, like, I could feel myself getting hit, but it didn't, it didn't, like, it didn't hurt, right? Like, it was, it was weird. It was weird. I just, Alexa, stop. So it was weird, right? And um, all I knew is I was in danger. So I was like, fuck. So I tried to run. I kept falling. I kept falling. I kept falling. It was really fucking weird. And then the, the time period following that, I couldn't remember shit about it for a week. I don't know what the dudes look like because it would be impossible for me to remember that. I'm not going to lie. They, did, they didn't come up in my face and was like, hey. There, there were two dudes, but I don't remember what they fucking look like. There were two dudes who told me to give, give them. They tried to rob me, I guess. They are like, give me what you have in your pocket. I was like, nigga, I don't got shit. Like, I'm, you know. And, and, and then when they found out I didn't have shit, they got mad at me. And I'm like, nigga, fuck you. You know, and then I just, yeah, I went into the store and I told them to call my mama. But um, anyways, I remember those details. I don't remember their face, but I couldn't remember shit for a week. I went to school. My lip was all busted up and shit. And, uh, you know, they, they were making fun of me because my lip was busted. But, I, you know, I figured, like, all right, you know, Look, I got my ass whooped. It is what it is. I'm on because I, I could have just opted to not go to school, but I was like, man, fuck it. I'm gonna go to fucking school. They can suck my balls. You know what I mean? They can say whatever the fuck they want to say. It is what it is, and I let it rock. You know what I mean? Like I'm not that fucking insecure. People think shit really does get to me. It's like it, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me that much. I got tougher skin than you think. Shit doesn't bother me that much. But anyways, so getting into the True Jordy podcast. And what, what was wrong with his interview was that he kept asking. So what happened was he kept asking about uh, the David Chisora fight and why he's fighting him. Basically, why are you having a trilogy with this guy? We already seen enough. We know David Chisora. He's not the opponent that you, you should be taking. Um, he's not the opponent that you should be taking. You should be taking a tougher challenge, blah, 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 blah. And he kept reiterating that, asking that over and over and over until Tyson Fury got mad. And then he, he basically said, fuck you to him, right? And... I can understand one. I think the reason he's taking the David Chisora fight is maybe it's the easiest route to being able to make history. He does care about his legacy. So he said he didn't care about legacy in the interview. But then he's like, look, I'd be making history because I'd be the first heavyweight champion to complete two trilogies. So, yeah, I want to do that. So he can make history by fighting David Chisora, who he's sure he can beat. It's like, yeah, why wouldn't I do that? He and on top of that, we just saw him talking about how he thinks his time is near. He doesn't want to die in the ring. He's putting his life on the line, just like Deontay Wilder, just like Tyson Fury. People are forgetting this. They, they, they so easily forget the fact that fighters can actually die in there. And you're going up against the, the most dangerous punchers in the fucking world and being a heavyweight in Tyson Fury. And people who've never fought before, like True Jordy, you're just some big fuck on steroids who's likes to, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, you know. You're just, you're, you're just that guy, and you're over here telling me how I should be conducting myself as the heavyweight champion of the world, and how I, who I should be fighting, and what's wrong with this fight, and what, what's, you know what I mean? Like, it comes off arrogant. It's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and that's what's wrong with this generation and this internet generation now. Everyone thinks that they're this analyst. Everyone thinks that they have room to talk, and everyone thinks their opinion fucking matters. The fact that True Jordy thought that it was okay, and he lost perspective. He thought that it was okay for him to go to Tyson Fury and tell him what was wrong with him taking this fight and why he shouldn't, be, why he should be taking the other fights, trying to satisfy the fans. The fans are all fucking ignorant. True Jordy, you should not be that fucking ignorant. Those are a bunch of teenagers. Even if they're fucking adults, it doesn't even matter. You need to conduct yourself better because you are not the fans. You are someone who's talking to Tyson Fury and you need to have respect. Imagine if you were talking to Muhammad Ali and you questioned him about some shit he did in the fucking past with his opponents. Or, if God forbid, you question him about deciding to not get drafted and why he's a coward for doing it now. You know what I mean? The, the disrespect, the audacity for you to have that when you were not in his shoes and you 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 were never even put in that situation. You, you haven't even been through half the shit that he's fucking been through. Now, I forgot to say this. I also want to add the fact that why would you be... Why, basically this is promotion for his fight and if you're promoting the fight or helping him promote the fight through an interview and he came to you to help with that why would you de-promote what's the opposite of promote why would you speak against the fight to begin with why would you keep on asking about it antagonizing it if you had the question you ask it the initial time and then that's that and you let it go that's what most professionals do 
That's what Teddy Atlas and other people who who interview boxers, that's what they were doing. There's a reason they do that. Because it's, it's out of respect. For one, the person's trying to make money. You're ruining his business by doing this. And two, you're disrespecting him. Well, at least with Teddy Atlas, he fought before. So the disrespect doesn't come from a side of ignorance. But, you know, it comes from, it, it comes from another boxer. But you never even fucking fought. So you're just doubly disrespectful. You're coming at his money and just speaking from a place of ignorance and like you know to be able to even tell him anything you're a, you're just a fan bro that's basically what you are so stay in a fan's place don't don't do that and you're lucky enough to that you that you even got blessed with his company to talk to him and he came to you and you did that so i can understand him being mad that's all i'm saying i know true jordy you've gone through your mental health shit and blah 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 blah, blah. whatever cool he has too but the difference is He's went through that while also fucking putting his life on the line and fighting. What the fuck have you actually done in regards to that? That's come close to that. I know you did some shit. You went in the sea. You got in the water. I mean, cool. I am scared of the sea. I am scared of the water. I mean, I'm giving you credit for that. I, 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 I'm not going out there and I'm not swimming with the sharks. But, I, but let's be real. That's a very controlled environment with a lot of professionals who know how to mitigate that. And largely, most of the times, you guys are not getting attacked by sharks and shit. He's literally, every single time he goes out to do his profession, he's putting his life on the line. And the fact that you could not even think, you know what? I have, I don't even have the perspective of somebody who constantly puts his life on the line, who's constantly fighting. I don't have that perspective. Maybe I shouldn't ask these questions. Maybe I shouldn't say this thing. No, you didn't think that. You thought that you knew. You thought that you, man, I'm an armchair, I'm an armchair, armchair analyst. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You and Cavalch, you don't know what the fuck you, you, you're even looking at. You don't know how to fight. I've seen you on the pads. Honestly, bro, it's just, you're, it's, it, all it is is your size and you're fucking slow. You're slow as shit. I think anybody with some comparable fucking hands, as long as they, they have enough height to be able to reach your fucking face, they'd outdo you in a spar because you're just slow as shit and you're stiff. You don't know how to fight. You don't know. You don't even know what you're looking at, honestly. You don't. And the fact that you feel like just because you worked your way up because you have connections and now you can commentate on YouTube boxing, you think you can talk to Tyson Fury and tell him why what he's doing is the wrong thing or why what he's doing isn't the best thing to do. You, you forget your place. You're not a boxer. You don't know boxing. You haven't put in the time in boxing. So why are you sitting here and talking to him like this and talking to him as if you know what the fuck you're even talking about? That was very, and you could tell Tyson Fury was very offended. He was like, look, I can't sit here and let some, some fucking tosser who's never even fought in his life tell me how I should be. It's like, dude, you don't even know. You haven't put your life on the line in there against Deontay Wilder three fucking times. This nigga had short-term memory loss. He lost his fucking memory. And you're over here like, man, you know what? You need to go out there and you need to fight people like that again. No, he's put in the time. He's done what he's needed to do. He's fought the people. Yes, I mean, it'd be nice if he could fight Joe Joyce, Usyk, and Joshua. But Joshua fucked up that fight on his own. He fucked up the money. It's like, why would I take this fight now? Now, now I can't even really get the payday that I really want out of it because Joshua's a dumbass. The only reason I'd be willing to take someone as dangerous as Anthony Joshua is if I'd be getting paid. And now he fucked up the money. I'm not fucking fighting you. Told your ass to wait. You didn't want to fucking wait. You decided you wanted to fight you six, someone smaller than you, and you thought that it would go easier. He beat you two times. Now your stock, your stock has dropped, and nobody wants to see this fight any fucking more. So fuck you. You know, I, I, like, I get it. I get it. And I can understand. You could call him scary all you want. He fought Deontay Wilder three fucking times, the most dangerous puncher in the history of boxing. That right hand is the most, he fought him three fucking times. He fought, um, the, he, he fought, uh, what, what he fought, Klitschko? And I think those were like the two biggest fights. And still at the end of the day, regardless of what you say about him, he's going in there against trained killers. He's going in there against people that if you were to go against them, you'd be fucked. So you could say it's an easy fight, so he took a bunch of whatever, whatever. You ain't putting your life on the fucking line. And until you do, you have no room to even talk. And it's funny, I don't see any actual boxers criticizing him like that. Maybe people in his division so that they can talk shit and potentially get a fight. But I don't see people in lower weight classes, vulture weight, lightweight, whatever, flyweight, whatever the fuck. I don't see any of them talking shit about him. It's nothing but respect. And I don't think that's out of fear of him that he's going to get back at them or something. I think that that's just genuine respect because they understand what he's doing. 
They don't criticize what he does. So, yeah. Remember, guys, these are just people. These are people, and they do something dangerous. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to have to do the most dangerous thing in the world if you ain't getting paid enough for it. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and uh, I'm out. Peace.